give me a second and I'll just read that for you. The Bible says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. If we could be good enough to build the bridge to get to God and become acceptable to God and numbered among the righteous, then we would boast about it. By the way, that boasting would be sinful too. <laughs> so that, that wouldn't really work either. Not by works. Let me just... Not by works. So what is it by? It is by grace. By grace through faith in Christ. Okay, it says, it is by grace you have been saved. Saved. Saved means to be rescued uh, or healed or delivered. Uh, saved from what? Well, saved from the natural consequences of being separated from God. Saved from living a life uh, dominated by sin only to earn death, only to be judged, only to be found guilty, only to be sentenced in hell. Saved, rescued from that. So how does God do this? How does God save us? When all of our bridges and all of our attempts are, by biblical definition, going to fail. God builds a bridge. That's what the cross was about. That's why Jesus came. What God did was he said, you guys, bridges are not working. They can't work. So I will build a bridge that is sufficient. And so God sent Christ to pay the sin penalty that all of us had incurred so that we could be forgiven. And so, let me just show you a verse out of First Peter. First Peter three eighteen. The Bible says, "For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous Jesus." For the unrighteous, all of us who had sinned, turned from God and gone our own way, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit. Christ was put to death on the cross, not for his sin, he was sinless, he did not sin. For our sins, paying the sin penalty that a holy, just God would require, because we were all it, because we all were going to have a guilty verdict. Christ paid the penalty for us t for the purpose being put to death in the body but made alive by the Spirit. He didn't stay dead. God resurrected him, raised him from the dead, conquering death on our behalf. As, as the Bible says, as first fruits, so that there would be hope of more people uh, also following in that pattern, dying physically but not dying spiritually and being resurrected. First Peter 3.18 again says that Christ died for sins once for all the righteous for the unrighteous to bring you to God. It wasn't initiated by you. The bridges that are initiated by you and begun and constructed by you are going to fail. The bridge that God built is sufficient to bring you to God. Now, this picture shows us a picture of God through Christ on the cross and the power of the resurrection saving, rescuing us, delivering us from the consequences of being separated from God. This whole picture is a picture talking about Jesus being Savior. But the Bible tells us that this Christ is, 
is Lord and Savior. And so I want to show you the rest of the story because this picture will bring you to God, but what does that mean in our lives? Uh, let's look at this picture. This is a picture of self, and self is sitting on a throne, it's the throne of your life, and self rules as king, sitting on the throne, king over your own life. You rule your own life. You run your own life. You've already told God, I'm going to go do whatever I want to do. I don't need you. Stay out of my life. You know, don't tell me what to do. That, that sort of rebellious attitude. In our own life is uh, money and time and friends and family church and school and work and our reputation and a whole bunch of other things and what happens is in this picture while we're still separated from God self is the king you decide what you're going to do with your time. You decide what you're going to do with your money. You decide who your friends are going to be. You decide if you're going to go to school and work hard in school and get good grades in school and keep going to school. You make those kinds of decisions and choices in life. You decide uh, uh, what you're going to be, what you're going to become, uh, which school you're going to go to, which city you're eventually going to live in, what job you're going to do. Uh, is church going to be part of your life? Is the Bible going to be part of your life? Is God going to be part of your life? You're making choices and decisions along those sort of things. What kind of relationships with friends and family and neighbors and co-workers you're going to have or not. And this picture is a picture of self sitting on the throne. There's an interesting verse in the Bible. In Luke 9. It says this. This is Jesus talking, and he says, Then he said to them all, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Jesus says we must deny self. Take up cross daily and follow Jesus. Follow him. That means that this picture changes. This picture looks very different. Uh, so the throne of your life is still there and self is still in the picture. But now Jesus... is sitting on the throne as the king. All the areas of life are still there. We still have money and time and friends and family and Bible and church and we still have school. We still have work, we still have reputation, recreation, and all of the other things in life. But in this picture, self has been denied kingship. Self is no longer the boss, the master, the one who's in charge. Self is dethroned, and Christ is enthroned as king. 
And this is a picture of Jesus as Lord. There are going to be some things in the Bible that tell us some things about this, these areas of life that self is going to, to be in right relationship with God, surrender those things to the commands and authority, the teachings of God's word.